Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you may or may not know, depending on if you follow me on other social media, such as Twitter or Instagram, if you don't, you should follow me, links in the description. I recently went back to New York for a very stagey week, including BroadwayCon and six Broadway shows. And I thought it might be quite nice to talk you through how I booked those shows, because I know a lot of people will probably ask. I will mention it in the vlogs of seeing the shows, but I thought it might be quite nice to just have all of the information in one video. So if you only care about how I booked the tickets, and that's fine, no offense taken, I can obviously tell you all in this one video. So I'll crack straight on with it. The first show that I saw was Wicked. I'm wicked trash. I don't care. I love it. So I wanted to see the Broadway production again because it's been a couple of years. I last saw it in September 2015. So I feel like it's been a good enough break. And also Jackie Burns has returned to play Elphaba. And you know, she's like a pretty big deal in the wicked world. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to see her, which it was. So I was umming and ahhing about whether to book for wicked, like full price, wait and do the lottery, blah, blah, blah. But I was planning on seeing it on my first day. So I knew that if my flight was maybe delayed, which it was, then I wouldn't be able to do the lottery. I didn't want to risk getting a crap seat. So I waited until the Broadway week two for one tickets went on sale. This was kind of a new thing for me to discover. I'd never really seen it before, but basically I don't, I don't know the exact dates off the top of my head. So I will put them on screen here. There's a set amount of dates in like the January, February time. And then also I think in September where it's kind of self-explanatory, but the tickets go on sale via, I think it's the website is NYC Go and it's two for one. So tickets are cheaper, obviously. And then for some shows, I think you can also pay an additional like $20 to get a seat upgrade or something. I don't know. I'll link the website in the description so you can check it out. If for now, maybe if you still have time to like book a show with that offer or to just know in the future. But anyway, I ended up doing a two for one for Wicked because it was only slightly more expensive than the seats that I, or well, the seat that I was gonna buy. And then I was thinking I can ask a friend to come along or I can try and sell the ticket on the day. I ended up going on my own, but I didn't waste a lot of money, so that's fine. So for Wicked, I'm looking down because I've got obviously <laughs> all the numbers and stuff. So for Wicked, I paid $143.70. So that equals 100 pounds and 74 pence. Bearing in mind, this was for two tickets. So essentially 50 pounds per ticket. And I also bought ticket insurance for this via Ticketmaster. I don't normally do this, um, but because obviously I was flying in that day, I just thought if something terrible happens and I'm delayed to the point where I miss the show, that's obviously quite a lot of money to miss out on. And I think the insurance was, 10 or so dollars around that mark. So I thought I'd rather just pay that and guarantee that if I can't make it to the show, I can get that money back, you know? So Wicked, yeah, that came to $143, let's say $144 to round it up. And for two tickets, and that was in the orchestra. So the stalls, the ground floor level of the theater. And I was in row S, so just over halfway really nice seats actually it was a really great view the ones that i was looking at originally i think were 119 dollars anyway for one ticket and that was going to be just a little bit further forward in the orchestra but considering how the rake of the orchestra is i was really happy actually to just be a little bit further back so it all worked out really sure i technically spent 20 or so dollars more than I needed to, but I don't regret it. <laughs> the next show that I saw on my trip was Dear Evan Hansen. And I was umming and ahhing about whether to see Dear Evan Hansen, whether to even try and get tickets. So basically I had Wicked booked for the Wednesday and then I had shows booked for Friday, Saturday and Monday. So the two days I had free were Thursday and Sunday evening. For a lot of shows, they don't play on a Sunday evening, whereas obviously most shows play on a Thursday evening. So I was thinking to myself, right, I can either 
try and book shows in for both of those nights, which obviously was my ideal situation. Or I was thinking, or I can prioritize one show, see that on the Thursday and then give myself sun like Sunday evening off. Cause obviously Broadway con was three days. It was very intense. Um, and I figured I could probably do with an evening not at the theater. Things went a bit differently. So on the Thursday, I was originally in the rush line for Waitress because I prioritized Waitress. I really wanted to see it again. I really loved it when I last saw it. Sarah Bareilles and Jason Mraz are in the cast now. And I mainly wanted to see Sarah, not gonna lie. So I thought, screw it, I'm rushing, day seating for Waitress. I got there a little bit later than planned, obviously because I'd, I'd flown in the day before, I was tired, I'd been to see a show, you know, there was a culmination of factors. So I got there around, I think 20 past eight. And I was, I think like 16 to 18 in the line. I can't like, it was really hard to tell how many people were there because obviously some people had friends with them that had gone to get coffee or what have you. It was intense. And I think the first person that got there had been there from, I wanna say like 5.30, six o'clock-ish. And it was cold. You know, I wasn't gonna get up kind of crazy early. Anyway, no spoilers, but it all worked out in the end. So yes, I was rushing for Waitress and it turned out when the box office opened that they only had nine rush tickets available. Stupidly, I didn't ask at the box office how many of those were seats and how many were standing room because that would have been good information to have. But regardless, they only had nine tickets. So a lot of the line left. <laughs> I stayed, I went up to the box office anyway, because I thought I've queued here for at this point two hours. I'm not going to leave without a ticket, you know? So the cheapest they had left for the Thursday night was $230, which mm, I wasn't happy paying that much. So I asked for Sunday and they said that they had a seat, side orchestra, partial view, at $109. So I took that for Sunday. In the queue for Waitress, I'd met a couple of fellow Brits, British people. I helped them get tickets to Waitress for a Saturday evening. I think they got it at the same price. Same price or maybe a little bit more. I honestly can't remember. But basically they managed to get tickets for Saturday, which was great because they really wanted to see it as well. And then I also took them around to the Hello Dolly box office and we got them rush tickets for that. And then while we were in the area, I thought I've now got Thursday like that night free to see a show. I was like, Let's just, I'll just go to Dear Evan Hansen and see what they've got. And they had a standing room ticket available at $42. So obviously I bought that. <laughs> it was really funny because she said to me about the $42 standing room ticket. And already I was like, yeah, I don't wanna pay any more than $42 to see a show that I'm already not 100% certain on. And then she tried to like upsell me to a box seat for $150. I'd been reading up on the Broadway World Forum about how the box seats were at Dear Evan Hansen. And I think they're like slight partial side view. So, I wasn't gonna pay over a hundred dollars more for a not so great view just to be in a seat. That was not gonna happen. I went for the $42 standing room. The standing room view was fantastic. Uh, the music box theater is not huge. The orchestra section is not huge. And the standing room ticket that I got was right in the middle of the standing room. So you have an allocated number and then on the wall at the back, they obviously have the numbers. So you have a little kind of your space that's designated, which is great because then obviously it doesn't cause any fights with the people there being like, no, I wanna be in the center. Or I was here first, you know, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I was shocked because Dear Evan Hansen does their standing room tickets through a digital lottery, which I didn't even enter. I didn't even look up how to enter it. I think I just got really lucky by them having one available. Um, but I know a friend of mine recently was in New York and she did the same. I think she was there later on in the day, like more 
kind of around the six o'clock time. I got to the Dear Evan Hansen box office at around 10.30 in the morning. So if you're desperate to see the show, I would totally recommend just going up to the box office, obviously being really nice to them and see what they have because either I just got really lucky or they're kind of holding a couple of tickets here and there to sell because I had been looking at Dear Evan Hansen through their website and through StubHub and I hadn't seen those box seats. They, they didn't come up for me at all. And StubHub, I mean, the fees for StubHub are ridiculous. At the end of the day, I was tempted to spend a lot more money on Dear Evan Hansen, but the StubHub fees put me off, to be honest. So yes, I'm glad that I only paid $42. You'll have to wait for the vlog to see more of my thoughts on that. Okay, so the third show of the trip was Hello Dolly, which I saw with my lovely friend Jake, and we booked this a while back. Basically, as soon as Bernadette Peters and Charlie Stemp were announced to join the cast, I was like, Jake, we need to book this now. So we did, we booked the front row of the balcony and the total came to $183, which works out at 128 pounds and 29 pence. And I think I rounded it up to 128 pounds and 30 pence to just split like, you know, the price per person. So that's 64 pounds and 15 pence per ticket for the front row of the top level, which is kind of crazy, but the view was great. By the way, all of the prices that I'm telling you are including all of the ticket fees and everything. And these tickets we booked, yeah, it was just full price through the website as soon as, as soon as they were announced, because I didn't want us to miss out. I wanted us to have decent, but still fairly cheap seats. I found the front row of the balcony to be really good, um, but Jake's taller than me. He's like, I think six foot six or something, something crazy tall. And the leg room was quite tight for him. So if you're kind of my height, I think I'm five foot six, five foot seven, um, you'll probably find the leg room to be fine. If you're kind of taller than six foot, it might be a bit of a squeeze for you. I know that Jake sat in the side section of the front row at Hello Dolly, and he said the leg room was worse over there. So at least the middle is a little bit better. Also for Hello Dolly, now that Bette Midler isn't in the cast and the prices are not as disgustingly crazy as they were, Todaytix is offering some discounts. And if you watch my channel, you know how much of a Todaytix fangirl I am. So yeah, they're actually offering discounts and I'm just having a look now at what you can get. So they've got some seats in the balcony at $49, which are $30 off of the ticket price. In the mezzanine at $79 and that's $50 off the top price or the price, you know, the total price. So yeah, they've got some pretty good discounts on there. And obviously if you use my referral code, which is on screen now and linked in the description, I hate myself, but it's fine. You can get $10 off your order. So yeah, it's discounted and that's good. The fourth show of my trip was another theatre visit with Jake. It was so nice to get to go to the theatre with Jake on this trip. And we went to see SpongeBob, which he has seen, I think, four times now so he obviously loves it and i've really enjoyed it as well you know i was skeptical like most people when the news came out that they were making spongebob squarepants into a musical but they did good we got our tickets with the broadway week two for one scheme like i did with the wicked tickets so for spongebob it was 149 dollars and 70 cents total, which equals 104 pounds and 95 pence, which per person is 52 pounds and 48 pence. So nice seats. We were the fifth row of their mezzanine, which is the dress circle for us Brits. And yeah, it was a fantastic view. It was really good. We missed a very tiny part. They have like a sloped bit um, at the front of the stage. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. Almost like, you know, like how, how at skate parks, they've got the, I, I don't know the term, but you, you, there's a slopey bit. So you missed like legs, but you could always see faces. And there's, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a lot that goes on um, at the proscenium. So it's good to be further back, I think. I think the dress circle, the mezzanine, is a really good spot to be for this show. 53 pounds per ticket, that's not, 
too bad. I've already mentioned it, but obviously on the Sunday I saw Waitress and that was the ticket at $109. Yes, it was partial view. It wasn't the size that I thought it was gonna be. Um, When he pointed, when the box office sales person, um, when he pointed the seat out on the map, I thought I was gonna be the other side of the orchestra and I was gonna miss kind of um, some scenes that happen in the kitchen, not to spoil anything, but you know, if you've seen the show, you do know but I was on the other side. I really didn't miss anything important. Um, I missed like some bits of choreography, but everything center stage I could obviously see. And the bits that I missed, I already knew what was going on because I saw the show before from the mezzanine and I had a pretty central seat. So yeah, um, I was just grateful to see the show again and not have to pay $500 for it. So winner winner again a quick today ticks plug i know there's definitely cheaper seats for waitress going on once sarah and jason leave i'm really intrigued as to who they're going to cast or who or who they have casted for after that period but yeah tickets are definitely cheaper and it's such a gorgeous show honestly i'd highly recommend seeing it no matter like who is in it because it's so good. The final show on this trip was Once on This Island. I'd been looking at tickets for this and looking for a discount code and there was nothing discounted, which is really good. Like it's always nice to see a show succeeding and not needing to discount any tickets. But when you're seeing six shows in one trip and you wanna try and be as cheap as possible, a girl needs a discount code. <laughs> I ended up booking tickets through Broadway week because thankfully, it was on there, I was so grateful. I asked Jake if he wanted to come with me and it was still a bit too expensive for him, which is fine. But thankfully his friend Weston wanted to see the show. So she came with me and it was really nice. We'd met briefly at the flea market um, last September. And then we actually ended up bumping into each other at Broadway Con the day before we saw the show. And then obviously we saw the show together and it was really nice. It makes me really happy. Like, cause it was so nice to spend more time with Jake on this trip but also like to meet a couple of his friends and obviously see the show with Weston. It was just really, really nice to know that I now have more people that I know in New York. So if I go over there again on my own, I know that, you know, there are people there that will most likely happily go to the theater with me, at least I hope so. It's just nice to know. So for once on this island, the tickets came to a total of $187, which in pounds is 131 pounds and nine pence. And I think again, I rounded it up to 131 pounds and 10 pence to make it 65 pounds and 55 pence each. And as I said, that was through the Broadway week two for one. We were in, I think it was the fourth row and they don't have, they just have, it's in the round. So, you know, there's just one level. It was good seats. Yeah, very happy with them. So anyway, that is how I booked my Broadway tickets for my most recent trip. There are other ways to buy cheaper tickets. Um, this is just the way that worked best for me on this trip. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I think it's always best to check Broadway box and to check what prices and locations the rush day seat seats are in. I'll leave some links in the description for Broadway box, obviously Today Ticks New York. Quick note with Today Ticks, I love it, but in New York, the fees, the fees for everything are crazy. If you are local to New York, buy your tickets at the box offices, like at the theater, because it will be so much cheaper for you because you'll save, well, depending on how many tickets you buy, you're gonna save a lot of money in fees itself. And also a quick note, if you are able to buy your tickets at the box office, if you're a local or if you're happy to wait until you get to the city to buy your tickets, I know some people prefer to buy in advance. It's totally fine. I absolutely understand that because I, I knew that there was only two shows really that I was potentially going to rush. And even then I was dreading it because it was cold. If you find a discount code on Broadway box or something similar like Playbill Club or things like that, generally you can use that code to get the discount at the box office and then also save on the fees that you'd have to pay online. I don't want to say this as a blanket statement and then it not work for you. Like it might be worth calling up the box office in advance to double check that they will accept the discount. But 
I know from like talking to Jake about it that the theatres do often accept this. So it's definitely worth doing. I think I cut myself off while making another point. With Todaytix, if a show is discounted, then obviously, I mean, always shop around, double check different prices and see where you're getting the best value. Todaytix I love in the UK. It's such a great app for London because generally the discounts are good if a show is discounted but New York, it's a whole other kettle of fish. As well with Today Ticks, for most shows, you obviously won't know your exact seating locations until you pick up your tickets. For some people, that's fine, but for others, it's absolutely not. If it's a full price show, I would recommend just buying it either directly through the theater's website or at the box office if you can, because then at least you are like spending the least amount on fees. If you shop through different websites and it's a full price ticket anyway, you're probably going to pay more in the fees because you're paying for the website's fees as well, if that makes sense. However, if it's discounted, obviously then you just wanna see where's got the best discount and if it correlates with the best seats that you can get at that price. And then you gotta factor in the fees as well. Sorry if that whole ramble didn't make a lot of sense. If it didn't, let me know in the comments and I'll try and clarify. But basically, if a show is discounted, check on a few websites that I'll have linked in the description. See where you're getting the best price. If you're gonna to use Todaytix, use my referral code. Thank you in advance. If you're planning on doing the Rush slash Day Seat line, then I would recommend checking out the Broadway World Forum. A lot of people discuss the kind of seats that they've gotten from doing the Rush line. For a lot of times it is kind of partial view seats. Obviously if you want a full view, it's better to spend a little bit more and get obviously a, a full view seat. If you're happy with standing for a couple of hours, sometimes standing room is better than a partial view seat. There are so many factors involved. I'm sorry that I can't give like one straight answer, but this is my advice. <laughs> As I've mentioned a few times, there's gonna be loads of links in the description. So make sure that you check those out. And obviously if you're interested in any of my thoughts on the shows that I saw recently on Broadway, there will be vlogs for all of them and they'll be coming out in the next few weeks, the next month. If you wanna know what I thought of them, make sure you're subscribed and you stick around. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And as I said, do subscribe if you want to see more of me in the future. I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you in my next video. Bye.